I hope that did the trick. I believe, I believe that should have done the trick. Although it looks like I might be a tad loud. I don't know. I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know. It's it does whatever it wants to. It's AI. The eclipse did it. The eclipse did it. Okay. <laughs> I'm blaming the eclipse. All right. Hold on. So now, like I was saying, welcome to Omens. Uh, I've got a lot of different things to talk about and discuss today. However, I'm retarded and I left my phone volume on, so now I have to turn that off. Hold on. God dang. Shit. I hate technology. Fuck. All right. Let me try to get settled back in over here. Okay. I need a clacker. <laughs> Can I get a clacker? You know, like when they mess up in Hollywood and they go, ching, take two, ching, take three. <laughs> Or clack, or however the, however that sound is. Anyway, jdreamers.com. Everybody's been going there. Everybody's been going there and leaving uh, some sweet omens, videos, and pictures. Let's uh, let's jump into some stuff, right? We're definitely going to talk about the eclipse. People will probably be talking about that for another month, which probably includes me. So let's check out some stuff. First, viewer submissions. These are so cool. I want to just thank everyone in advance who has gone to my website. You know, not everyone makes the cut. Sometimes just be, you know, it's just regular people. Sometimes people just want to share things with me. But a lot of these made the cut. So I'm going to share a lot of these with you. Uh, man, I had this all set up perfect last night. I had the lights set up. I had everything. Audio was, everything was working. I swear to God. All right. Anyways, uh, this first one comes to us from Anastasia out of Hemet, California. Right? Pretty close to where I went to high school, actually. So, let's check this out. This is a video that Anastasia sent to me. And I believe it's a video. There we go. So, yeah, she saw these weird spiral clouds, these circle clouds up there in the sky. And I think she was trying to zoom in on this star, too, but she's, she accidentally got this or maybe purposefully got this q cloud i don't know what to call that it's like a q cloud interesting right just in a circle uh next up let's see i'm gonna come back to that one because that's this is these are from these are related to cake town so cake town actually sent me uh some stuff here and this is all related i didn't put these in order so i'll come back to all of this so this is from cake town uh she drives across the country and she stopped in imperial valley in california it's way southern california real close to mexico and arizona um just south of actually where i grew up in uh, riverside county you know well, one of the many places i grew up anyways look at these sand dunes let me move this up. let me move this down a bit for you so you can actually see how high up these sand dunes are <laughs> like uh my fa my my aunt on on my in my family one of my aunts she uh they were basically rich so they got to go play all the time so they would take their quads and stuff and they would go up to uh glamis which is uh really close to this huge sand dunes in southern california not a lot of people associate california with just immense desert and yet we have this, which I believe this is a, this is a great picture. I'm glad that Cake Town shared this with us because where does this come from? Where does that much, look at all that. Look at, there's the ground way down here. You see that ground? Way down here's the ground. And then up here, look how high up that is, right? And you can see all the places where people have taken their little four wheelers and three wheelers and whatever. I would not recommend a three-wheeler going up that. Anyways, um, where's all that sand come from? This is basically a beach. This is a huge pile of sand and debris, right? Um, and it's also an omen because this is what much of the world, I believe, is going to look like after the oceans are removed. So, we're coming up on the apocalypse. It's ever getting closer and closer. And as a part of that, especially through the plasma apocalypse lens that I look at the world through, um, hopefully the volume's not clipping too much. 
I don't know. I messed up the volume. Um, through the plasma apocalypse lens, right, the oceans will be removed because we have a worldwide depressurization whenever the firmament breaks open. Our pressurized world becomes depressurized. When that happens, buoyancy increases in abundance from all around us, causing things to float. Water is the first thing that's going to float. It's just got nothing holding it down whatsoever. It's pretty much already floating, right? Um, and so that water will just rise up into the skies and leave the ocean bottoms for new land to people to go explore and uh, find treasures and everything. So anyways, she was in Imperial Valley, which is really close to a lot of popular and even famous places um, like El Toro, like the, the Marine Corps base El Toro that was mentioned and featured in uh, the day after, I mean, not the day after tomorrow, the 4th of, what is it called? The Independence Day <laughs> with Will Smith. All right, so anyways, I wanted to share some of these pictures that she took. I want to show you how close this is to another interesting thing, which is I did a video about this other place called the center of the world, California, right? This is about two miles away from this right here. So I don't know if, if Cake Town knew that or not, but she was about two miles away from this whole place, this strange exhibit where these people, they call it the center of the world. And they, they, they made it official. In France, they recognize this as actually being the center of the world. They have a piece of the staircase from the Eiffel Tower. So they have a stairway to heaven just going straight up into the sky there. Uh, it's all symbolic. It's all like Illuminati... Freemasonic symbolism, which harkens back to the apocalypse, right? Here's a certificate that people can get whenever they visit this pyramid. And at the on the floor of this pyramid, it says center of the world. There's the pyramid right there. Here's a certificate. It says official center of the world. And then you have the Mount Maru symbolism and then the eye in the sky behind that. It says this certifies that so-and-so visited the pyramid that stood at the official center of the world. This is all Mount Maru symbolism. And I, I feel that people like this and people who are born into certain families and who are the elite or related to the El or the Elven race of old, that they're privy to certain knowledge. And uh, this is all symbolic. Check this place out. I'll just show you real quick. If you want a more detailed view, look for this video that I've done. Just type in Center of the World J-Dreamers and this will pop up. But I took everyone on a tour of this place. It's got these two... Um, symbolic pillars of Hercules on either side. You walk through those. There's this hand of God pointing directly north, right? Um, basically midnight and then it's pointing north to pointing right at this pyramid. And then there's an unfinished pyramid. If you walk straight down this trail, they have all these monuments. They have all these granite stones that record history and they look like they're, they're, I mean, they're stuck in the ground at certain angles uh, and it looks like they're there to survive the apocalypse like this is a and they do this all the time they leave these markers in stone oftentimes dug down into the ground like just rooted into the ground and I believe it's to survive apocalyptic scenarios to leave messages to those because they know there's an apocalypse coming and it would not surprise me if there was an underground base right there or not, a, it doesn't have to be a military base, but an underground bunker right there. I, I, I bet you anything that there is. So they have this unfinished pyramid over here in the back with the church behind it. And the church has like a door that looks like a blue beam. Now this is what it looks like from above. You have an eight pointed star, which represents the eye in the sky, the all seeing eye, etc. Um, with a little mini unfinished pyramid or a type of pyramid right there in the middle. And uh, then you have like this beam type shape in the background. But Cake Town was just this far away from it. She was right here where the dunes are. Over here. You see the dunes up here in the corner? She was right, right there. And this Museum of uh, History in Granite, as it's called, is just right there. Boom. Uh, let's see. This is what it looks like on the map, too. It's just super close to where she was. It's pretty amazing. All right, let's get to some more viewer submissions. Oh, Cake Town's got a few more, too, actually. So while she was out on her road trip, she took a picture of this interesting-looking mountain, right? Now, it's real easy to explain how this mountain formed. 
This is exactly where plate tectonics meet. And they just pushed each other into this particular shape. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, no, it sounds stupid. Uh, all right, so let's see what the next one is. There's a far away one from Cake Town sharing these interesting, cool mountains. Yeah, I don't, I don't buy all the plate tectonics theories and whatnot. Oh, this was really, this was funny. That's what really what I wanted to share. It's not an omen or anything, except for maybe zombies or something. This is a lizard, but if you look closely, you'll notice that the lizard's hand, its right hand, is a skeleton hand. She found a lizard with a skeleton hand. I don't even know how that happened at all. But she f somehow happened upon this skeleton-handed lizard. Isn't that insane? There's the other hand. Where's the other hand? There's the other hand. That's, that one's fine. But this other one, not looking so good. <laughs> All right, what's next? Uh, this one, oh, Cake Town also. So we got a few from many people. Cake Town sent in a bunch. Um, she sent, she was in Texas during the solar eclipse and she took some pictures and a video for all of us to check out. So let's check out these pictures. This one's pretty amazing. This is, I don't even, oh, I don't, I'm going to talk about these. You see these little dots? You see these little pink looking magenta dots down here? We're going to talk about those when we get to the, the headlines. All right, so that's, that's the picture of totality. Check this one out. It really shows those, right? What is that? What is that? What is this? Right? Speak like if we're going to ask what it is. What is that right there? That's no moon. I don't think that's the moon at all. <clears throat> I'm not convinced that I mean I even if listen, I could tell people I don't think that that's the moon, but even I don't think that the moon is the moon. <laughs> like so I don't know, I'm throwing people for a loop. Uh, then she took this one. This is probably the best one. This was really a great capture. Look at this. Is she in the chat? I don't know. But check this one out. Like, look, she even got these little magenta things. I'm going to tell you what I think they are here in just a second. But look at that. I've never seen these during an eclipse. I've seen a few solar eclipses in my time. Never once have I seen that at around it okay i know many people are like oh they're solar flares man i don't know We're, we'll talk about that uh and then here's another one and i believe she has a video yes so here's cake town's video of the solar eclipse while she was there let's take a look at it so even though there was a little bit of cloud cover she still was able to really zoom in and get I mean, the cloud almost makes it even cooler, I think. It's kind of a smoky, foggy look to it. You know what else was weird is, did anyone get flashy thingied by the sun? I didn't look at it, so I've I just been looking at YouTube videos. But in like every video I see, right when it, the whole sun's about to disappear and it's just a sliver, right whenever it just, dis, it's supposed to disappear, it's like the flashy thingy from Men in Black. Wow, look at that. It's a weird elliptical shape. Anyways, that was really cool. Thank you so much, Cake Town, for sharing that with us. Did you guys get flashy thingied by the eclipse? I don't know. Um, this one was sent in by Itai, or Itai, out of Iowa, who uh, had taken a picture of this amazing double rainbow. And what's even more interesting is how the light plays in these rainbows that people have been taking pictures of some people have recently noticed black inner parts of the rainbow or darker parts this one's the opposite this one everything on the inside of the rainbow or under the dome is lit up and everything outside of it is much darker it's so interesting to me now all of these optical effects whether they be rainbows or sun dogs or eclipses or whatnot me personally, you're free to feel and believe whatever you like, but me personally, I see evidence every single time I research this for the creation of this world. I see evidence not for science and this is how the light works through clouds and this and that. I see evidence that there is a firmament 
a dome of ice, I think it's ice, um, above our heads, that we have a ceiling, a roof above us. It almost looks like there's a little lion or something right here in the clouds. All right, so that one's pretty cool. Oh, and then Itai, I don't know how to say that. Itai, Itai, I-T-A-I. Itai out of Iowa also sent this one. So his story is that he was walking and accidentally like snapped a picture with his phone. He was just carrying the phone in his hand. And when he looked down at the picture, he saw this strange light looking thing. And then he turned his head sideways and he believes he sees like a creature. So if I flip it around and move it up a bit, he says that he sees like a goblin creature with holding a knife. You guys see that? I don't always post what people what people see cuz people send me pictures all the time like, "Oh my god, this this looks just like this and this looks just like that." And I don't want to get flooded with too many of those and then that's what this whole episode becomes about, you know what I mean? But I did find an eerie, you know, I found, let me show you, yeah, it looks kind of like a Skeksis, <laughs> like, basically, hold on, let me go back, let me, let's go back and forth, right, so here's the, here it is here, and here's the Skeksis, let me move it up a bit, so here it is there, that's a rainbow, so there's the Skeksis, or you could just like use this one as well, but I like the other one better, and then there's this image, right, I mean, yes, we're all very imaginative, and it's fun to be imaginative as well, but it kind of looks like a Skeksis, like some plasma Skeksis or something. I don't know. Anyways, I wanted to share that, and uh, let's go on to the next one. Uh, also from Itai out of Iowa, sharing these weird popcorn ball clouds. Uh, clouds have been doing some weird stuff lately. Not just that they look like things like, oh, this cloud looks like an angel, this one looks like a dog, this one looks like a tree or whatever but just the shapes of these clouds strange types of clouds that we that we never really used to have we used to have like three main types of clouds now there's like 30 types of clouds all over the place and uh they're doing weird things they're acting strangely up there in the sky and i believe it has a lot to do with the changing conditions in our world increasing pressure uh jim donovan <laughs> clearly affecting the clouds i'm just kidding Thank you, Jim Donovan. I super. I just, I just saw that right whenever you sent me that donation. That was really kind. Number sixty nine in the in the likes. Man, you guys are hitting the like button. That's awesome. Thank you. All right. So, uh, Itai also sent in this picture of the sun, and a few people have sent me pictures of the sun, and they've been noticing that there's like these cross beams of light or whatnot. You can see the sun dogs on either side. Now, this is really the doom shape. Remember how I talk about the doom shape that was mentioned in the Colburn Bible and is referenced, you know, across history just in different ways and stuff? This, it's the circle within the circle. It's also the, you know, the archetype symbol, I guess you could say, for Atlantis. Jim Donovan, high five. Thank you so much, Jim Donovan. You're the man. You're always the man. All right, so um, this is basically the doom shape. I'll show you another image and show you what I mean here in a minute. But the reason that we see these circles and the reason that we see like extra suns, these are these are suns. These are points of focus in the sky. Um, academics won't say that that's a sun. It's just oh, it's just a light effect. Yeah, it's a it's a focused light in the sky, which is a sun basically. Because that's what that is in the middle. That's a point to focus. It's not a gaseous ball that's collapsing in on itself and gravity sucking it and keeping it together from flying apart in a vacuum and etc. That's a point to focus up there in the sky. It's light that is directed at us and then redistributing, giving us daytime. These are also points of focus, which are little suns, basically. Um, but the reason we see these shapes... Um, it has a lot to do with the dome that's above us and the shape of that dome because it's not just a simple dome shape, I don't believe. I believe that there are, are other domes on it, <coughs> just like there's craters on the moon. Now, Kima Louise. Kima Louise. Hold on, where's Kima? Oh, Tasmania. That's right. Kima sent this out of down in Tasmania. Do you remember the, the Tasmanian Devil cartoon? 
Come to Tasmania, down in Tasmania. We mean you. I don't know how he does it. That's that's the Tasmanian devil. Anyways, uh, she sent this awesome video of a magenta sun, a pink sun. As she says in the video, I think she's got some audio. Let me see. Hello, pink sun. Oh yeah. So you got sometimes people are giving like uh, oftentimes when people send me these videos they're giving you guys shout outs the good vibe tribe and and, and myself too sometimes uh, the sun is now pink <laughs> yes a pink sun yeah and it's cracking it up anyways it's really cool looking um but also an omen hearkening to the time whenever our uh our color spectrum is going to shift dramatically right now it is shifting the color spectrum in the world that comes from that big bright white ball of that point of focus up there, it's shifting. And so the color spectrums change over time. Uh, in ancient history, we had different colors and different colors for the sun, different colors for the moon, different colors for everything as the light itself shifted and changed and the pressure it slowly increased over time. Uh, going all the way back to the times of uh, a monochromatic lifestyle. This one is from Mary Soul out of BC, Canada, who just wanted to share with me a beautiful campfire and sunset. This is one of my favorite times, like right around this time and just before that golden hour, whenever everything's sort of becoming a silhouette. Uh, but yeah, it's a very nice campfire. Let me show you the campfire here, which actually harkens back to our campfire episodes where we did the call-in episodes, which were really fun. Uh, and then next up, we've got Michael out of Steamboat Springs, always sending me some good stuff. My own personal friend, Michael, shout out to you and yours. I know you guys are uh, always watching my channel, and uh, sorry I don't always contact you all the time. I'm just so busy. Um, but I miss you guys, and I can't wait to see you again. Uh, Michael sent me this picture. He didn't take it, but it's a picture he found of um, just after that earthquake hit in New York, that 4.0 that hit in New York. This Look at this magenta lightning. Pow! Hitting the Statue of Liberty. This symbolically, as an omen, represents... This, the Statue of Liberty represents the mother goddess wisdom okay i know many people have different things and some people are like oh it's just pure evil and some people are like no it stands for freedom or whatever esoterically my studies indicate that this woman this statue um represents the beam of energy that comes up out of the earth right it's just personified and cartoonified in different ways um and then you have the magenta plasma that comes down and fights against it it's the cosmic battle it's also the cosmic marriage between heaven and earth. So that was a pretty cool find. And Michael also sent me this one. I'm gonna- Look at that shit, dog. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Okay. Go. These people Holy are- shit, dog. It's a fucking meteor. <laughs> it's a fucking meteor, dog. It's okay, hold on. I gotta mute that, dude. Okay. So check this out. At first, what you think is a meteor, which is like a rock falling from space. You know, I don't, I don't believe in all that as they tell it. Hold on, let me, let me scooch this down a bit so you can see the actual meteor here. So, they believe that they're f capturing like a falling rock out of space, basically. But, keep your eyes on this rock. And now, hopefully, this will help others to reconsider when they actually see what they believe are rocks falling out of the sky. Watch what these rocks do. First of all, the main portion of it splits off <laughs> into tiny little, you know, floaties in the sky. And then some people might be like, oh, well, it just exploded. That's all. Academics, I guarantee you, would say that. But then let's watch what they do, shall we? Check this out. I'm going to allow this video to play. These people, if I turn on the audio. Look at the green dot. I see it. All right, he's, he's commenting on that. That's that's just a part of the camera, okay? Pay no attention to that floaty little jiggity thing right there. But look at these dots in the background. Okay, meteors, bro. Look, no. that one's flying sideways. Holy... Yes, he, did, he pointed out that after they broke apart, they started flying erratically in different directions. You see, like, some are going this way, some turn around. 
They all start moving. At first they were going down. Then they broke out. Then they just started appearing in different places all over the place. You can see they're like, they're now going that way. They were coming straight down. Some are going that way. Some are going to turn around like this one right here. That one's, that one's kind of holding steady. There's, there's a few of them in here that actually change direction. Okay. If these were rocks from space, which I don't, I've never seen a rock catch fire unless you count charcoal. Okay. But I've, I've never seen a rock, actual rock that has no metal in it. Uh, a stone catch fire. I've never seen that in my entire life. I've never seen a video of it. Um, I've seen people try their damnedest and their hardest to actually melt a stone. And um, it's possible, you know, like they, they have to, they have to go through extreme measures, but it barely, barely um, burns. It barely, barely melts or anything. So I've, I've never been convinced that there's flying rocks from space that just catch on fire, right? At all. And and on top of it, whenever you see videos like this with all these little floaties that just break apart. Now check this out. Look at this one. It's going the complete opposite direction. You see that up there? Hold on. You see that? This one right here. Hold on. I'm going to rewind that part. Hold on. It's just, I'm going to just go frame by frame real quick. Okay? So at the beginning of the video, you think you're seeing this rock falling from the heavens. At least that's what you've been conditioned to believe. Let's make this real big, actually. I want this to be huge. So boom, we've got this. It looks like a firework now. So it explodes. Now look at the directions. Check out these directions. Watch. I wish the camera was holding still. All right. So now they went this way, but then this one curved back around. You see that one curving back around right there? Check that out. And then look at this one. Scooch. Some of them disappear. And then they reappear and then they disappear and they change directions and everything. Plasma does this. Ball lightning does this. I know the guys in the videos swear it's aliens. <laughs> you know, I'm not, I can't prove that it's, it's not aliens, but, uh, cosmic plasma is alien in nature. Now see, all, look at some of them are just appearing out of nowhere. This one looks like it just went up actually right there. Then he zooms in on these things. And while they started off going down and then dispersed like that, now all of a sudden they're going this direction. Yeah. I I don't I I don't even want to hear any official explanation for that because I already know that they're going to give me garbage. Right? I don't think it's skydivers. <laughs> Skydivers that caught on fire and lost control, I guess. Uh, but to me, my number one culprit would be that this is plasma. That this is uh, electricity in the sky that's following the currents and whatnot. And then once it hits certain barriers up there in, in the sky um, or is runs into opposing circuits that exist up there, electromagnetic circuits, that it can break apart. And this is what I believe happened in Tunguska, actually. So if you guys remember uh, Tunguska, what's up, Truth Loops? Winner of the Channel Combat the other day. That was awesome. Uh, yeah, Tunguska, I believe this is exactly how it was described by eyewitnesses. They said that they saw uh, this huge, slow-moving meteor fireball up in the sky, and it exploded. Just like you just saw, except for this is probably a smaller version of it and it explodes way higher up in the atmosphere. But the earth is releasing a lot of gases lately, I believe. And, oh, here's another version of, of something similar. It's not the same one, but people see this stuff all over the place. These are like, you know, whenever you got like, you go outside and it's real bright and like you see those little floaties, but you know that they're actually in your eyes. That's kind of like this. But this is actual lights up there in the sky that people have filmed, right? I just wanted to show you guys an example, another example of this. People see these all over the place. They're not rocks that are flying around. These are not bugs, okay? I know it's it's not easy to tell what it is because it's a GIF I made out of a video. But these are lights in the sky. And they just move about erratically because it's electricity just following currents and then bouncing off of the magnetic barriers that each other creates and following its own um, magnetism, right? Magnetism sort of 
lays like a, a path for electricity to, to follow, basically, or plasma to follow. All right, so this one was sent in. Uh, let's see, who sent this one in? This was Mystic Moons out of Denmark. Mystic Moons sent this picture in. They found this on Facebook, I believe. And it's a picture. It says, extremely detailed view of the total solar eclipse. The reason I wanted to share this is because clearly this is not what you just saw. Cape Town took a video of it, right? This is not the eclipse. You got, we have to, we we would be wise to be careful on what we're sharing. I mean, I, not what we're sharing, what we're believing, right? I'm actually glad that Mystic Moon sent this in because I wanted to make a point. This is what it should have looked like if it was a rock moon, <laughs> like moving in front of the sun or whatever. Another thing is when you zoom in on the actual moon around the edges, up here around these edges, it's not a perfect circle at all there's like you can see like the little uh what they call uh craters and stuff like that right it's it's jaggedy i'm anyone that's looked at a a video of the moon with a p900 a p1000 telescope and all that they can see around the edges it's jaggedy and stuff you can see fine details and stuff i didn't see that with that dark circle that passes you know in front of the darkness in front of the sun i got a donation from Susie flat Thank you, Susie Flat. That was very kind of you. Wow, your 10th Super Chat donation. That's extremely kind of you. Thank you for all your support. All right, so this one, this next one comes up from Nabia Yawa in, out of Washington. And Nabia shares with us, uh, it's actually a screenshot that she took from another channel called World of Signs, which I highly recommend. Um... I am subscribed to them myself, and they get some really good stuff. They search the internet for amazing evidence of what I'm basically sharing with you as well, which are the omens and the signs. Another high five to Susie Flat. Thank you so much, Susie. Um, but in she took a screenshot of what is what they call a blue jet. Okay, this is a pillar of plasma, and this is what I'm talking about. These these are all small versions that don't last very long. But this is an example of the electromagnetic currents that come up and they move in different directions up there in the atmosphere. We, they're invisible to us most of the time until we see lightning or until we see um, ball lightning or you know different forms of plasma and electricity and stuff. Then those paths and those electrical currents are revealed to us. So this is a blue jet. The blue jets are also basically terrestrial beams of light that shoot up. But this is where gases are building up. The gases come up off of the earth, right? They follow their currents and their streams and stuff. They go up into the atmosphere and then they're ignited. And they turn into these columns, these light columns. Angel Wings just gave someone in the chat a channel membership. Who got it? Ginger Humphrey was gifted a membership by Angel Wings. That was very kind, Angel Wings. All right, uh, let's see. Next up, we've got Nabiawa also sent this in. It says... Uh, it says, Colorado becomes the second state to ban excited delirium. <laughs> not, no longer. You will no more excited delirium out of you. Um, what they really banned is um, when people die, they're not allowed to label it, oh, they died from excited delirium. Like George Floyd, they said that he died from excited delirium, which means people get so excited that they become delirious or they lose their minds. However, it's also an omen because I believe people are worldwide suffering from what could be determ uh, called, described as, excited delirium, the world across. This is what I've witnessed. I've seen this with my own eyes. I experience this every single day. I see people that seem to be delirious and excited. Usually they're walking down the road. I saw, I was picking up my son from school the other day and this guy was walking down the road backwards. The, like we were stuck in a traffic jam and we just watched this dude. He was not moonwalking or anything. He was just walking backwards the whole way. I see people doing the weirdest stuff. It's yes. Okay. I see, Milo's in the chat says fentanyl will do that. And I'm sh I believe you. I'll, I'll take your word for it. However, that's also just, I mean, just, just living in these times also seems to do that too. I don't know. That's just the world we live in is seems to me that it's the season of Satan. 
that it's an evil place that devils are in charge that everything is it's an illuminati world not an illuminated world but an illuminati world where everyone is a part of it <laughs> and most of them don't even know it and um i see a lot of psychos and a lot of crazy people and people with excited delirium Actually, I'm going to share a story of excited delirium with you in a bit whenever I get to my little Walmart piece. Now, here's another uh, video that I found of the doom shape. So I wanted to show you. I took a little GIF image of this. I believe this was in China. And it's that double circle image that you see in the sky. This is the eye in the sky. The sun is, sh is just showing us. It's, it's hard to really reflect the dome and to to show us what the dome looks like because there's so much light and energy coming at us it's coming down from the heavens from the sky and it blinds us to what's behind it behind all that light which is the firmament but when the energy in our world reverses and we go through a polarity shift then that energy and light goes back up the other way and the energy outside of the dome goes up and around it instead of down and around it so i believe we'll be able to see um the dome and and uh we'll be able to see these shapes in the sky this is what i believe people will find when they look at the north pole this is the shape of niburu which this middle part will be really red more darker red it'll get lighter as you go out but it's just these different domes that are inverted and regular one on top of the other at the apex of our firmament and the light comes down off of those and it makes a little image up there in the sky. The doom shape. I did a video on the doom shape as well. Now, after the eclipse, somebody took a video of the ocean and there was a bulge. Do you see that? There was a bulge in the ocean. I think there was a joke in the, there somewhere, but I missed it. <laughs> I missed my time. Anyways, look at that. You could clearly see the horizon, which is a horizontal line. And then, boop, right there, there's a bump. What is that? I don't know, but weird things are happening in the ocean lately. Lots of strange things, right? All the coral reefs are being bleached right now. There's uh, toxic chemicals and gases coming off of massive amounts of sargassum seaweed that are washing up everywhere, and, and they, they say that they're going to have even more. Uh, that was it. I believe that was it for viewer submissions. That was my own little viewer submission. So next up, let's go over to um, headlines. I'm just going to call it headlines. It's just me ripping stuff off of the internet. Hey, there's me and there's all you. Uh, let's see. Let me go ahead and go over to let's start with that weird anomaly that everybody's talking about in Antarctica or the waters allegedly the waters off of Antarctica I'm gonna play this for you now there was an anomaly you watch right about here okay you're gonna see what you're looking at is a map that shows you all the little ocean waves okay like if I if I hover over this it'll show you right here there's eight and a half foot waves and over here there's ten and a half foot waves and over here there's just four foot waves or whatever right there was a really weird anomaly lately. I'm going to show it to you. It happened twice this year so far. I'm on February right now, and I'm going to play it what happened back in February. This is February 20th. If you want to check this out for yourself, it's called VentuSky.com. V-E-N-T-U Sky, right there, dot com. Now, check this out. February 20th. Click play on that, and then watch right here. Check this out. What happens? Going into February 21st. And all of a sudden, this shows up. And if I hover over this, it says that there's tech, it believes that there's 83 foot waves that left Antarctica like a freaking tsunami spread out. This is back in February and then crashes into the continent of Africa um, and then sort of splits itself right here. Now, the official explanation, I believe, is that, oh, our system glitched. All right. Well, you know, that's fine. I don't, I, I, I'm not convinced that it's a glitch. I'm going to keep playing it. And then it just disappears here too. I'm not convinced it was a glitch. I'm also not convinced that these were 80 foot waves and then they just disappeared right after that or whatever, because I would have heard 
I would expect to hear all sorts of news about, you know, the ocean washing clear into halfway up Africa or something, right? But I don't, I don't hear that, especially if they're 80 foot swell. That's an 80 foot swell or 80 foot waves, whatever. So that's huge, right? So I'm not really saying that. Now, let me show you the next one. Let's go to this month, April. And I think it was right after the eclipse, actually, April 9th. So let's play, yeah. So I'm going to start on the 8th. This is the day of the eclipse. I'm just going to let it play. And then it's going to go into the next day, April 9th. Right now, this is like three hours at a time. 9 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and then bow. This is April 9th, around 3 or 6 o'clock. And it grows again. This glitch. Right? You see it moving? Some people have suggested that it is an underwater craft, and then it just disappears. Some sort of underwater craft or whatnot. Now, I looked it up, how they determine the size of these waves and stuff. And one of the things, aside from buoys that they use, because I don't, I don't think they have that many buoys everywhere. I don't, I'm not sure. But one of the ways that they determine this is through satellites as well. So, my theory is that... An alternative idea, instead of it being a craft that's underwater that's creating this huge bulge or some sort of a tsunami that's crashing into Africa, what if it's in the air? What if there's an anomaly that's in the air and that these satellites that are shooting their lasers down at the ocean are being interrupted, right? By something that's high up in the atmosphere, not not down low in the ocean or on the surface. I'll play it one more time for you. Let me go back to the ninth. This is the recent one. You see right there next to me? Check that out. And it's flat right there on the bottom too. That's weird. But it's mo definitely moving in this direction. Come on. You can do it. Come on. Go ahead. We need a cataclysm. Come on. Do it. Go. Make it happen. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> Some people are like, that's not funny. Nah, okay. I'm, I don't think it's funny. I, I, I really genuinely can't wait for the apocalypse. All right, anyway, so I wanted to share that with everybody. Then, right around the exact same time, we have this. Breaking news. Do -do 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 we go live. We go live now to J Dreamers in the studio. Yes, everyone, I'm here with America that has lost half at least half, some cases they say over half, of their weather radar equipment. It says widespread radar outage hits nationally. The National Weather Service, over half of their radars are down. When we have these strange anomalous weather patterns that are happen to be emerging right after a strange eclipse, which we're going to come right back to in just a second, right? Do you guys think that there might be... Where's my chat? You think there might be a connection? <laughs> I, I think there might be a connection. All right. Do you think they might be trying to hide strange weather and extreme weather events that are happening all over the place suddenly out of nowhere? My ears are all pointy today. Oh, I'll just do it. We'll just have pointy ears. Now, next up comes... There was an earthquake in Taiwan, and these people caught this rock slide. Now, this is related to the mountains melting, and all the people that love the melted buildings theory and all that stuff. Check, check this out. I'm going to let it loop, but these passengers in the car, right after this earthquake, caught all of this debris and rubble and stuff this is this is what i believe it means when it says that the mountains melt during the apocalypse basically um there will also be a lot of heat so i know there's heat involved too because the sun gets hotter and hotter and hotter as it goes but isn't that crazy if you want the volume here you go oh, what the she said what the fudge <laughs> oh. oh man did you see that? Yeah, I saw the mountains melting, just like it says in the Bible. Oh, you read the Bible? You're not supposed to be reading the Bible. What are you doing? You want to get us arrested? <laughs> I don't know. I just, I'm just, uh, I'm just letting you know what I think they said. I don't know. Now, next up 
is uh, what is this? A fireball. Another fireball. What color do you suppose this fireball I'm going to show you is about to be? Let's see what the chat says. Let's just see. I'm just going to randomly ask. I'm going to show you a fireball that people call a fireball. Okay, not a not a rock, but a fireball. What color do you suppose this fireball is about to be? Let's see if every. Let's see who. How many people guess it off the bat? I bet you everyone guesses it. Uh, let's see. Where's me? There I am. Pow. All right. Shadow Hunter says green. Green eyed crow, ironically, says blue. Uh, green, green. We've got three greens. Milo throws in a red. Okay. Okay. We've got some greens. We've got some blues. We've got some blue greens. Let's see what it is. Let's see what color it's going to be. I like playing games. Uh, where the hell did it go? Oh, this is it right here. All right, let's check this out. This is in New Jersey, by the way. What? That was it. Show it. There it goes. You see that? Greenish blue. Okay, so greenish blue. Let me re I'm gonna, hold on. Let me play it again. Play it again, Sam. Did you know that that was never said? That he never said play it again, Sam? It's a Mandela effect. Anyways, there it is. Now, do you see how it just disappears? It flashes, and then it disappears. That's what light bulbs do before they go out. This is electricity. I believe, it seems to me, that this is electricity. Fa-pow! And it just disappears. I've seen this with my own eyes in Colorado. It lit up the entire horizon. I called the news. I called the police. There were, it was no big deal to anybody. They didn't care. They seemed annoyed, actually, that I had called. Now, next up, this article says, No, you did not see a solar flare during the total eclipse, but you may have seen something just as special. Several media outlets have incorrectly claimed that explosive solar flares were spotted during the April 8th total solar eclipse, but there were no flares during totality. So what did people... C. So, shout out again to Cake Town, man. Those were great pictures. This, first and foremost, I'm just gonna share. I'm just gonna share off the top of my head, okay? Off the top of the dome. This right here, not the moon. What we're seeing when we see the moon and we see the sun and we see these images and points of focus in the sky is the firmament reflected back to us in points of focus or projections or whatever. Now, there is a doom shape up there, which, as a part of it, um, has the hole. Basically, there, a hole opens up in our sky from time to time, and magenta ionized hydrogen that's electrified pours out, which is plasma, right? This is what I believe this is. This is plasma. They Academics will also say it's plasma. However, they'll say, oh, that's just sun plasma. Okay. I'm I'm not convinced. Um, this is terrest this is terrestrial plasma that comes from the dome, or it's cosmic plasma that's trapped within the dome, basically, and it's up there, above us right now. This is Medusa's hair. You get it like a sneak peek. Let me make this smaller. You get a sneak peek of Medusa. Okay, this is where the whole Medusa thing comes from. Now, when the plasma apocalypse happens, you will see this whole eclipse. Except for the, the ring will be blue all the way around the outside. And it'll be burning hot any, anywhere in daytime. You'll see that whole circle in the sky. The black goddess or the black god or whatever you want to see it as. The face, okay? With the blue ring all the way around it. And magenta snakes just writhing off of it. This is a prime example that has been... That is a huge omen of what once was and what is to come. This will revisit us. This is a precursor. This is a harbinger. This is showing us the trial by fire that will soon take place. So I believe that these are not that, you know, you can see billions of miles away and you could see the freaking plasma shooting out of the sun and then warping back in on itself or whatever. Um, but this up here is a dome. 
and the the plasma moves about the dome up there because it's you know it's it's working with its own electromagnetic fields that the dome has because it's a superconductor. The dome is a superconductor, I believe. Uh, next up, we got these rainbow clouds. What are these called? Lots of people have been seeing these way more. They call these fire rainbows on this article. Make super rare appearance. Yeah, well, guess what? It's not not so much anymore. These used to be super rare. However, I'm seeing videos of these all over the place in the last two years, I'm going to say. Last two years, these have been popping up everywhere. When Ultimately, you're not supposed to see these unless you're in the Arctic Circle, basically. And this is in Texas, I think. Where was this one? Uh, Houston. Yeah, this is in Houston, Texas. So these rainbow clouds, this is also a, an omen of the apocalypse, okay? When the color spectrum gets to that where there's every possible color, then it's time to reset. It's time to go back to zero. It's time to start over with one color, which is how I believe everything happens. We go back to monochrome, black and white world, etc. I mean, it, it seems black and white. white. If, all, if all you know is the color red, then it might as well just be black and white because you'll see in shades of light and dark. You won't know that it's red. You just That'll just be the only color. It won't be anything to compare it to. You know what I mean? So whenever, whenever the color spectrum gets so diverse and so put out there that the rainbow becomes a symbol of the times that we live in, which are apocalyptic, which is on the verge and on the cusp of the apocalypse. Next up, we've got um, this article. It says, we live in a cosmic void the hell there we go we live in a cosmic void this person does so empty that it breaks the laws of cosmology okay well they're whatever they i don't know what laws of cosmology that they're talking about or referring to but this is what i'm talking about this is the conditioning this is this is the idiocracy that's just passed down from generation to generation because we have left the old ways. We've stopped studying the, co the not the cosmos, but the firmament and the earth and mother nature within the earth, under the earth. Uh, what, what our earth is actually made out of. We've come up with ridiculous stories about, you know, fanciful fantasies and theories um, about everything that academics puts our way. From flying ice volcanoes, cryogenic Siamese flying comet volcanoes, uh, to where the moon came from. We'll look at that one here in a minute. To everything. Everything is re just idiotic to me. So, this is a part of that. We live in a cosmic void. They're talking about space. They're trying to teach you that space is this vacuum. Except for whenever it's, we don't want it to be. Except for whenever our theories don't make sense in a perfect vacuum. And then we start changing our story and moving our goalposts and saying, oh, it's not a perfect vacuum. Well, there's actually weather in space and we, and we need a space weatherman. And, you know, there's actually ice flying slushy balls and there's this and that and blah, blah. They keep changing things. So cosmic void. This is what they want you to believe. That you're nothing and you live in nothing. When I have found evidence through my experience, my research, my my faith, my feelings, my emotions, that it's the exact opposite of what they're saying. Instead of nothing, I see everything. I, I don't know what nothing even is, honestly, except for people who are blind and can't see. So they can't see anything. <laughs> like, You know what I mean? Um, I don't look up at the quote-unquote heavens, which is just the firmament. I look up at the firmament and I'm amazed by the handiwork of something great that created that. I look up at the heavens and I see that there is a firmament, a vault, a dome, a solid object that is blocking the light that I know is on the other side of it. And that there is space between the ground and that solid object above us acting as a roof and a protective barrier from cosmic radiation or what we would call cosmic radiation and that on the other side of that it's beautiful and bright and that heaven is up and that heaven is not dark and that it is not a void or a cosmic void and that it is actually the fullness of creation that it's a busy 
packed, beautiful, wondrous place to explore out there in what I call the fractal verse, not a cosmic void. So I just wanted to point that out that this is, I don't know what's going on with that picture. That's me. I just wanted to share a little bit of me. I don't feel like I'm in a hole or anything like that. Okay. So anyways, I don't even want to read that article. Next up, Fallout. I'm not going to break down Fallout at the moment, but I will tell you I've been talking with Tommy Truthful, my buddy, and uh, he's watching it too. I will tell you this. Don't watch this show with your kids. If you have young kids, oh my god, I had a cringe dad moment because I thought this was a video game movie and it's not a video game movie. It's a, it's a rated M video game movie, okay? It's not for children, in my opinion, okay? That's, that's me. That's how I try to raise my kids, okay? Uh, but anyways, aside from that, I was... I had an awkward moment, man. <laughs> like, where's the remote control? Where's the remote control? Oh, I could feel my face get, face getting flush. Anyways, um, yeah, we're going to talk about this, right? This whole Fallout thing, there's a lot of apocalyptic stuff that's popping up all throughout pop culture, all throughout the movies and books and commercials and everything. People can't help it. They can't help it because they're being drawn to the knowledge and they're, they're, they're being forced to come face to face with the inevitable with the apocalypse that is soon on the way. So it's manifesting everywhere. Manifests in video games, manifests in movies, manifests all over the place. In, in your, your song lyrics, your music videos, the apocalypse is all the rage because it's, it's, it's on its way. Anyways, this whole movie, Fallout and the video game, is basically about uh, bunkers. Right? The elite, the rich, they know that the apocalypse is coming, so they all prepare and they start making these bunkers um, in order to direct society and manipulate other humans, the people in their bunkers, to live how they want them to live, to sort of play God with humanity. And there's a question about what's on the surface after these you know, nukes go off and there's an apocalyptic event. There's also types of phantozoids and mutants that are running around. There's a lot of plasma apocalypse symbolism all throughout this. You can clearly see the number 33 right there. All the vaults have different numbers. So th this woman is from vault number 33. I will tell you off the bat, this represents the survivors. 33 represents Mount Maru. 33 represents those sh who are descended from survivors who came from the north or from the mountain that is 33 miles around, which is Mount Maru or Rupus Negra, um, or those who are going back to it, okay? So anyways, um, and then you can see the electricity and all that stuff. All There's lots of symbolism all throughout this. But bunkers have been coming up a lot, even in my dreams. I've dreamed about this too. I had dreams where I saw the elite building all these underground bunkers and stuff and i live right by cheyenne mountain in colorado which is an it's a, it's a doomsday bunker i'm just gonna put it out there okay to me that's a doomsday bunker not oh it's extra fortified from israelis and and uh chinese and whoever i don't know like dude it's in the middle of the united states okay you know how far they have to freaking shoot a missile even to get this far no they're gonna if 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 anyone, which I don't believe in all that war gossip either. Okay, I don't fall for all that. I have no problems with Chinese people, Korean people, uh, anyone, any of those people in other countries that your media wants you to hate and to immediately side with America and say the Pledge of Allegiance and stand up and be patriotic and crap. You can have that. I I, I I'll give mine to you. You can have mine. I want it. I don't believe in that that I need to just hate. I mean, that's freaking... I'm, I'm like, and then here in the United States... Ooh, I'm about to go on a tangent. Here in the United States, people are just losing their ever-living minds the further they get away from the old ways. And then they start picking on one another as they have been living in the lap of luxury because they have nothing else to do except be slaves and then go home as rich slaves. Um... The racism card is played all over the place. You know what I mean? Everywhere. And yet, 
this whole we're going to war north korea sucks and china sucks and i'm you know I'm, they might have the same thing and say that you know the united states sucks and you know what i mean like they have no business even talking about racism like as far as i'm concerned because that's like the ultimate thing right anyways i'm not a part of it i went off on a tangent sorry anyways uh underground shelters deep underground military bases etc there are worlds beneath your feet even right here on the surface world that most people have no clue even exist there are levels beneath dia beneath almost every single military base between every place underneath every place of power the vatican um even underneath the great pyramid there's there's vast underground tunnels all over the place but the public remains ignorant of most of them i'd say like 99.9 percent .9 of all of these underground worlds most of the public it appears to me is completely ignorant of them they have no idea they have not ever been shown to them really on the news if they do then it's like something popular something and and if there is some sort of a cavernous system it's a guided tour or it's off limits and people just accept it people accept things most people these days just quickly accept whatever they're told which is a segue into this next article and my own personal experience that i had yesterday at walmart this article, written by some douchebag, says why Walmart, Costco, and Sam's Club workers check your receipts, and you should comply. <sighs> Haley Peterson, man. Eh? Okay, well, you're allowed your opinion, buddy. Let's talk about this. Hold on, I'm just going to sum up this article. I don't want to read this whole article because it's going to upset me. All right, but basically, this this guy, you know how when you go into Walmart or one of these types of grocery stores, but specifically Walmart, right, that there are, are usually elderly people or disabled people or somebody, I don't know, there's, there's bodyguards that have the, the satanic smile. I'm going to call it the satanic smile. It's people who are evil AF on the inside that smile. And they welcome you and they greet you and they say hello and when you leave and by you i mean me when you leave when i leave hold on we'll get to that <laughs> when i leave check this out. let me just tell you this story okay they say hey can i see your receipt oh hey can i see your receipt sometimes they'll just walk right up to you with their hand out like a beggar like a vagabond just walking right up to you like hey they expect you oh this gets to me this ex they expect you to give them your receipt for something that you just purchased and and made a legal exchange you bought it it's yours now they want to see your receipt now there's two sides to this argument on one side there's people that basically support the system i'm going to tell you this from my perspective which is extremely biased one side supports the system and they say it's just a receipt why don't you just show it to them why make a big deal out of it why don't you who cares why are you causing problems why don't you just show them your receipt that's this guy that wrote this article he's like well you know theft is a big problem these days blah 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 walmart is a bunch of thieves all of these corporations are thieves okay they all support the system which is a big uh uh, what do you call like uh, mob type you know system like the mob and gangs and stuff like that like all of these corporations to to include entire countries okay there are thieves and based on thievery and I see way the fridge passed it okay so it pisses me off whenever the thieves get all in their feelings you know and they're like oh you know we don't we didn't do our due diligence you see in the old days when you bought something you had an interaction with another human being and if anyone thought you might be stealing they could just go ask the human being and say oh no i checked them out i actually quite physically checked them out and i approve i gave him a receipt he left and 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 the receipt is not to prove that i bought it okay 
It's, like, it's if you want to take it back or there's, there's an issue with it or something. Like it's, it's, hey, I got it from here when I return it or whatever. Anyways, let me tell you what happened to me, okay? I, I spent all day yesterday trying to like find equipment for YouTube and lights and uh, audio stuff and all this stuff. And I needed to go to this Walmart. I went to like three Walmarts yesterday. And this one that had the thing that I wanted, which was this light, um, I just went straight to the back electronic section i'm like boom here's the light i'd like to pay for this i totally paid for it got my receipt stuck it in my pocket and i started to leave i got to the front door and i was walking out of the front door when i heard the voice of some tiny chinese asian lady behind me saying sir sir and she was yelling at me which immediately upset me i i knew who it was i didn't see her before i left you know what i mean like i pff, i don't even care I'm not looking at or for bodyguards to stop me from leaving a store. Screw that. Okay. But I leave, I'm, I'm walking out of the door and this lady's like, sir. And then she gets, she gives me one of those kind of sirs. You know what I mean? Like stop. Hey, you know what I mean? Sir. And so I stop and I turn around. I look at this lady. I'm like, what? And she says, I need to see your receipt. And I'm like, well, I don't need to show you my receipt. Bye. And I just started to walk away. And she's like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. She starts knocking super hard on this little security side door. And some security dude comes out. And I take a look over. And I'm like, and he's like, uh, sir, excuse me, sir. I'm like, man, what? And then two cops. And by cops, I mean thugs. Hired, paid government fucking thugs. Okay? Like, I want to throw up as I say that. These two cops come out right behind him. And they're like, uh, you, uh, yeah, they need to see your receipt. I'm like, well, I don't need to show them my receipt. So are you going to help me or are you going to help them? And they're like, oh, well, it's, it's a store policy. I'm like, well, it's not my policy. I just bought something with my cash and I made a legal transaction and I'm done now. So unless you want to press charges and unless you want to accuse me of theft, I'll be on my way. And they're like, well, we need you to talk to them, blah, blah, blah. And I, or we need you to show them your, your receipt. I'm like, I looked that cop right in the eye and I'm like, do I have to do that? Am I obligated by law, whatever, to show them my receipt, right? And basically, the, the honest answer is like, they can shoot me and kill me if they want to. And they can get away with it. And they can do anything they want to. There's no law. There is no code of morality. It, it, this is my experience, okay? I know some people out there that watch my channel are actually cops and whatever. But I'm just saying, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest, okay? I don't care. So... These two cops that are basically demoted to Walmart bodyguards are trying really hard to just like flex on me and insist that I show them my receipt. I looked this cop in his eyes, both of them, little tiny dudes. And I'm like, I have the receipt right here in my pocket and I'm not showing them shit. I'm done now. Can I go? And they they said, uh, "Yeah, you can go. Go have have a nice day, sir." And I celebrated all the way home. <laughs> I was like, I was talking trash in my car by myself. Like, yeah, that's what the f yet. You know what I mean? Like all the curse words came out, and I was just I was hot, man. I was hot. I was livid all the way home. Anyways, the reason I wanted to show you this and share that story with you is because, like I said, people just believe whatever they're told. Like this article talking about we live in a void and, and there's nothingness and we come from nothing and you are nothing and you're a child of nothing, etc. When I'm screaming the opposite and my experience and what I see and feel is the complete opposite of that satanic, evil, devilish garbage, right? Speaking of the devil, this article says Pluto's huge white heart. Aw, heart. Who Pluto? Pluto has a white heart, has surprisingly a violent origin, a new study suggests. 
Yeah, well, you know, I'm I'm getting tired about hearing their st- mysterious phantom studies and phantom uh, experts and all this stuff they have. Here's what they're talking about, okay? Now, first of all, they're telling you to see a heart. This white part of the Pluto planet. Like, does, does Pluto always face the same side towards us every time too, just like the moon? You know what I mean? Like, they always show you this. They want you to see a natural formation that kind of resembles a heart right here. This is the dog Pluto from Disney that has been painted by a NASA artist or someone that works for NASA or whatever, okay? This is the head of Pluto right here. This is the ear of Pluto right here. This is his neck. This is his mouth. This is his freaking nose. This is the dog Pluto. So this this says Pluto's huge white heart has a surprisingly violent origin. So I made this from uh, from AI like a Norman Rockwell basically type of art drawing Pluto or the dog Pluto to drew a face of Pluto and then he's looking in the mirror. I tried to put astronauts behind him and everybody's on fire. But anyways, I thought that was fun. I had a good time making that little image or whatever. All right, uh, next up. A volcano in Antarctica spews out precious pieces of gold on a daily basis. This is supposed to have shock value. (gasps) Oh my, there's a gold volcano spewing out gold in Antarctica. Yeah, (laughs) like George Carlin says, it's too far away to be any fun. Who cares? Screw Antarctica. That's freaking far away and cold. But this is my problem. This whole thing about consumerism and like who cares about gold? Like does anybody out there actually have uh, any kind of like, man, gold is really valuable to me because and then give me any reason aside from the fact that you can trade it in for pretend money, cash, right? That does not even exist except for its monopoly money that we believe in. And someone will give you cash for that. For some reason. Gold is stupid. Okay? I'm just I'm just gonna be I'm gonna share myself with you in this episode. <coughs> Excuse me. Gold is stupid. Silver is stupid. All of that stuff is stupid unless it's practical. Unless you're actually using it for what it may for what it is good for, which oftentimes is electrical in nature. Okay, have, have, how, many, have, how many people have questioned this? How many people, I'm looking at the chat right now, I'm like, I can't be the only one that doesn't find any value in the most alleged valuable substance in the world. I don't care about gold. Oh my God, blasphemy. Who cares? It's a rock, it's a metal. Who, I don't care. Am I a swordsmith? No. Gran Ermaga, welcome back. Good to see you. Listen, who cares? I don't care about gold. I don't care if there's a volcano erupting gold. A volcano that erupts life-giving plasma that regenerates my cellular structure and keeps me young forever. I care about that. That sounds more legit to me. But gold? People wearing gold chains, gold watches, you know, all of that. I've never been that kind of a person since I was a child. I'm thankful that we were poor my entire life. Like it's, it's, I'm, it's nice actually. I saw the other kids, all the cool kids at school with Nikes and all this, you know, all this fashion and stuff like that. And you don't typically see me like sometimes, you know, I don't know. I might have something cool to wear. Like if it's a crystal, I might have a necklace or something, but it's practical. Just gold for the sake of gold, because it's gold. Who cares? Who cares that it's gold? Wake up. The people have told you, hey, that's really valuable. Why? Who cares? <laughs> what does it do? Does it do something? No. Okay. Well, you can have it. Who cares? You can have all the gold, okay? Give me water. Give me food. Give me friends. You know what I mean? Screw gold. I don't care. And this is just me ranting. I'm just I'm just telling you like I, like I feel, okay? But gold is garbage to me. All right. Now, I also want to say this. I also believe that there is substance as to why gold, 
became valuable. And I believe, I'll just give you the short version. A long time ago, whenever there were giants that came down into our world, fractal verse travelers from other alternate Earths, basically, <laughs> I realize like sometimes I sound like a science fiction writer, <laughs> but I don't care. Um, these beings came down. They got trapped inside of our world under the dome whenever it fixed itself because the dome blows open. They can come in. We can leave. But then it fixes itself because it's made out of ice and it just refreezes. Once they're trapped under the dome, they have lifespans. They're no longer immortal. So they were looking for these radioactive substances that had healing properties. That So that the terrestrial blue beams that I talk about, they go throughout all of these veins inside of the earth and they energize um, metals and they become radioactive metals. And the, the gods of old, the angels, whatever you want to call them, they forced humans, they themselves, were they. that's all they wanted because life is the most valuable thing. Rocket Man, thank you so much. Rocket Man, hey, are you, are you, are you, are you my buddy, the Rocket Man? Anyways. Listen, life is the most valuable thing. Who cares about gold? Who cares about a metal? Who cares about anything? Unless it's a metal that can add years to your life and get rid of any diseases and stuff like that is valuable. And it glowed. It gave off light. These, these uh, crystals and metals and stuff that were radioactive, they glowed. They shined. And that word shine is gel. And it turned into geld, and then that turned into gold. And then whenever those beings left, all the humans uh, went around collecting, looking for shining metals. Whenever that shine started to leave the metals, then they just started looking for reflective metals that shined under light. That's completely different. Okay? Like, yes, those might be useful if you're a swordsmith or a blacksmith or whatever and you make stuff out of it and you melt it down or whatever. But in today's world, forget it. I don't care. Where is everybody? We got 147 people watching right now. Is that right? Let me go back. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. There was like 300. All right, well, let's let's continue on. Maybe it's too, maybe it's too much for people. <laughs> you want to see the sunset? you uh i don't know so let's continue on uh we've got two more articles here how to keep earth from being cooked by the ever hotter sun and then they show you an orange sun that doesn't exist there's no orange sun not now it used to be orange but not any longer they keep on showing you that because they want to program you and make you think oh the sun's not changing colors that's the color of the sun. Even though your eyes show you something completely different when you go out and look at that blindingly the white point of focus up there in the sky. Um, what would, would it say? How to keep from being cooked by the ever hotter sun. Most people, many people, especially if you're in the northern hemisphere, many people are going to be cooked by this object. Not that one right there. Right? But the one that I've talked about, how the sun changes color and it shifts into a blue spectrum. Blue means hotter. And they even teach that in academics, out there in space, in the void, and all that stuff. Blue stars are freaking hot stars. Red stars are very cool. Right? Um, the sun's turning blue, and it's going to continue to, to shift into the blue spectrum. And if it does, it's going to burn the earth. It's going to scorch the earth. It's going to burn up stuff. It's right now. It's heating up, and it's heating up the waters. It's heating up the ocean, etc. This, this is what I see, and that's having an effect, especially the oceans. Right? We talk about how big of an omen the oceans heating up are. Let me make sure I'm still live streaming. Are we still live streaming? There's like 80 people. Hold on. Where is everybody? Are we still live? I hope so. I hope I didn't piss people off or something. But everyone's leaving. Did I miss something? I might have lost my connection or something. I don't know. Let me... I hope I have not been talking to myself this whole time. 
deep breath, deep breath, deep breath. There's me. <laughs> okay, let's pause that. We are alive. Where is everybody? I don't know. I must have missed something. Anyways, I'll try to figure it out. I mean, everyone's allowed to leave whenever they want to. I just, that, I never normally see the numbers drop that quickly. Anyways, all right, let's continue on. Uh, the sun. Yeah, it's going to burn up everything. And I just got one more thing. So this article right here says the moon turned itself inside out. Scientists confirm whoever they are. So this entire article, I'm just going to save you the trouble. This entire article insists that mainstream academics has now figured out that a long time ago, the moon turned inside out. They go into, they, they go into their theory as to how. They also say that the moon, where do they say that? Um, for decades now, scientists have pretty much agreed that the moon formed from debris that flew off of the young earth. When another planet smashed into it four and a half billion years ago, exactly. We don't have a ring around our planet of debris. There's no fudging debris at all around our planet except for our garbage that we've shot up into the sky. So none of this makes sense. This, I just wanted to add this to the list of weird, stupid, and retarded things that mainstream academics says. That doesn't make any sense to me. The moon, now they believe the moon is the inside out moon. It turned itself inside out. So, just thought I'd share that with everybody. Man, there's like, everyone's gone. I'm like, I'm shocked. Hold on, let me look at my chat here. Let's see what it says. Uh, let's see. Someone says, I'm here, we're live, my chat stopped working. There was like almost 400 people in the chat. I can hear you, can anyone see this comment? I'm getting blocked too? My chat says, internal error occurred. Am, what am I, I'm I blocked? No, you're not blocked. No, nobody's, I didn't block anybody. What the hell? Yes, I see everyone who's asking, can you see me? There's like, everyone's asking that. I wonder what's going on. Oh, that's cool, Doctor Who. Something is not right, I agree. It says there's eight people. Hold on, let me check the chat and see how many people there are. What the fudge is going on? This is weird. Participants. It says... On my YouTube and on the screen, as you can see, that there's like five to nine people, but in the chat itself, there's like, I don't know, 30 or 40 or something. This is really weird. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. Another omen, I guess. We'll chalk it up to another omen. I'm all done anyways. So let's go ahead and wrap things up. Um, and I'm going to review the chat to sort of see what where things went wrong and, and stuff like that because that's really strange that that happened right all right until next time i'm jay dreamer saying good vibes and goodbye